Tons of research show that both professional and individual investors often fail to beat the S&P 500 index. Over the next 5, 10, 20 years, roughly 90% of funds will likely underperform this very simple market index. And the investors in those funds will do even worse, as shown by Dalbar's research. What if there was a way to outperform the S&P 500 consistently and reliably over time with zero additional effort? In this video, I'm gonna show you how. This video is for educational purposes only. It should not be considered investment, legal, or tax advice. It is not an offer to buy or sell any security. Past performance does not indicate future results. Investing is risky. In today's video, we're going to compare the S&P 500. Common ETFs include VOO and SPY. We're gonna compare that against the total stock market index. There are several ETFs that track this index as well, but we're gonna look specifically at Vanguard's VTI. Both of these ETFs are market cap weighted and both of them feature only US equities. The biggest difference comes down to the number of holdings they have. Here's the SPY ETF, but it would be exactly the same for other ETFs like VOO, but you can see it has 504 different holdings. Here we have the top 10 holdings as Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Berkshire, Google, UNH, Google Class C, J&J, &J, Exxon, and NVIDIA. If you take a look at VTI's holdings, it is exactly the same. The difference, however, is that VTI owns over 4,000 different stocks, which means there are major differences in the weightings, particularly in these top 10 holdings. For example, in VTI, you can see that it owns 5.59% in Apple, whereas SPY owns 6.22. So the holdings in the SPY fund are naturally more concentrated. You can see that the percentage of the portfolio in the top 10 holdings is 24%, whereas with VTI, it's 21%. So when it comes to diversification, both in portfolio weightings, being not overly concentrated in one particular name, and the absolute number of holdings, VTI is the clear winner. We can also see this difference whenever you take a look at the style. So here is Morningstar's classic nine box showing what percentage of the SPY portfolio is in large cap stocks being these here and what percentage of those are in value, blend, and growth. So for example, SPY has 16% in the large value 33% in large blend, and 35% in large growth. About 16% of the portfolio is in mid caps, and 0% is in small caps, with 84% of the portfolio being in large cap. If you look at VTI, you can see that the weighting clearly shifts to smaller stocks. So whereas SPY had 0% in small caps, VTI has 9%. And the mid caps are also a bit higher at 19% with the remainder or 72% in large caps. So if you're someone who is interested in just having a one stop ETF to own large caps, mid caps, and small caps, growth, value, and blend, you cannot do better than VTI. In fact, if you added another fund to VTI, you would actually make the portfolio less diversified than a 100% total stock market portfolio. So rather than buying a large cap ETF, a mid cap ETF, and a small cap ETF, and instead of buying small value, small growth, large growth, large value, you can just buy this one fund and that gives you exposure to literally everything in the US market. But how does this translate to actual risk and return numbers? As you may expect, these funds perform very similarly in both departments, but let's take a look at the details starting with risk. This data is from Portfolio Visualizer and to get additional data, I used the asset classes, so the US stock market being the total stock market index. This is a proxy for VTI. And then US large cap is the S&P 500, uh, which is a proxy for SPY and VOO. So the actual ETF returns uh, do not exist because they did not exist uh, back this far. But if they did, and if they did track these 
indices accurately, this is roughly the performance they would have had before fees. So you can see different time periods, market declines, how did the VTI do compared to SPY and VOO? And you can see that it just depends on the period. For example, in the oil crisis, the VTI performed better, but only very slightly so. It also performed better in Black Monday, the Asian crisis, the dot-com crash, very slightly in the subprime collapse, but S&P 500 performed better during the Russian debt default and the early stages of COVID-19. The total stock market ETFs might get the slight edge here, but it's very, very close. Logically, that makes sense. You should end up with a bit more diversification benefits with VTI since you have over 4,000 stocks, but the difference turns out to be quite small. So what about performance? We'll start by comparing the actual ETFs, VTI, and SPY against each other going back as far as we have data. You can see that VTI does slightly outperform SPY, an initial investment of $100,000 grew to $565,000 compared with $529,000 for SPY. That comes out to a difference in compound annual growth rate of about 0.34% per year, which if consistently earned over time would result in a pretty substantial difference between the two portfolios. The maximum drawdown for the VTI fund was 0.04% more than it was in SPY. Uh, so the very, very slight edge goes to SPY on that. But you can see the Sharp and Sortina ratios, which are both measurements of return per unit of risk, both favor VTI. But if we go back as far as we can, looking at just the underlying indices, it turns out that the difference isn't quite this large. A $10,000 investment in the VTI US stock market compared with the S&P 500 resulted in a very small difference, even going back to the mid 1970s. Over this entire time period, the VTI or total stock market index outperformed the S&P 500 by a minuscule 0.1%. It also had a very slight improvement in maximum drawdown, but looking at this longer data, you would conclude it is a virtual tie between these two funds. So between the S&P 500 and the total stock market index, which should you choose for your portfolio? If it were me, I would choose the total stock market index, and there's basically two reasons why. The first is, as we saw, VTI was more diversified, so owning 4,000 stocks versus 500 obviously gets you a bit of an edge on diversification, but most importantly, VTI represents less work. And I think the less work you have to do in your portfolio, ultimately the better your returns are going to be. So instead of someone buying a little bit of SPY, a little bit of a small cap fund like IJR, why not just buy VTI and basically you can get it all in one wrapper. Maybe you could make some small improvements by buying different ETFs based on different strategies, but if you're someone that just wants the absolute bottom line easiest way to earn relatively decent returns and probably beat out about 90% of other people over long periods of time, it's hard to go wrong with either one of these ETFs. But if you are deciding between the two, I think the slight edge goes to a total stock market index. But if your 401k has the S&P 500 and not the total stock market index, I don't think you're going to uh, be hurt materially by going with the S&P 500. It really doesn't make a huge difference over time, but I do think there is a small improvement in both long-term performance and diversification. Thanks to everyone who is currently supporting me on YouTube Premium and Patreon. For additional content on investing, check out the links in the description down below. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.